Hey folks, Flo here, uh, day three at Collision. I'm here with Alex Tapscott, uh, co-founder of the uh, Blockchain Institute, author of Blockchain Revolution. He has another book coming up, we'll talk about this in a second. How are you doing first? I'm well, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good, exciting. I, I wish there was more blockchain at this conference, if I'm honest. What well, do you we, think just, about? we just got to turn the conversation into a blockchain conversation. There you go, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, you just got off a panel, what are your key takeaways? Well, I mean, the key takeaways are that um, we're in this period where there are all these new technologies that promise to transform business in really important ways. Yeah. You know, AI, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, the Internet of Things, and so on and so forth. But foundational to all of these new technologies of the second digital age are blockchains. Uh, my view is that, you know, in, a, in the not too distant future when we have billions of people, countless organizations, distributed autonomous uh, companies, um, AI agents and, and things all needing to talk to each other, transact, do business, create value, prove their identities and so forth. It's not going to be using legacy financial infrastructure or even with existing platforms. We need a new peer-to-peer -to -peer toolkit to uh, enable the second digital age and to me that's the promise of blockchain and that's the promise of Web3. You mentioned the sort of existential uh, risk for legacy you know, corporations, yeah. maybe, maybe particularly in finance, but not only, maybe in tech too. Um, what, what do you think is the relationship between blockchain and sort of legacy institutions right now? Well, I think like any technology, any important technology, um, blockchain and Web3 is going to be very important for business. And I think it represents uh, a challenge as well as an opportunity for incumbents. You know, um, there are lots of businesses who today don't realize it, but they're standing on a burning platform, which means basically that the risk of jumping off to taking a leap of faith, trying something new, is actually counterintuitively less risky than the risk of staying put. Because if you stay put, eventually you're going to be consumed by the flames. And in the flames in this case are the new technologies that will maybe disintermediate you from your market where you operate. Um, but at the same time, there are at least as many opportunities for some companies to harness this technology toolkit and to be big beneficiaries of the change. Change. Already we're seeing tons of huge enterprises adopting you know, tokens, NFTs, smart contracts to uh, open up new markets or, or um, you know, engage with new kinds of customers or to create new kinds of products and services that weren't possible before. And to me, that's how you have to think about innovation as a big company. Not how do I guard, jealously guard what I have, but rather how do I open myself up to something new. Yeah. Um, last week was a pretty big week for blockchain, for crypto, it seems to me. I mean, BlackRock, Invesco, Deutsche Bank, uh, Fidelity, all announcing investments through ETFs. Is that, was that a big week for you as well? Well, it was an interesting reminder, I think, for a lot of people that notwithstanding what you read in the headlines, um, the institutional interest, the enterprise interest in this asset class and the technology hasn't really changed at all. And this has actually been uh, central to my thesis for the past year or so, which is that I actually think that the current environment makes enterprise adoption much easier. And there are a few reasons for that. Number one, um, the, you know, the platform that most enterprises are using to build uh, new products or to experiment in Web3 is Ethereum. Yeah. Ethereum just moved from proof of work to proof of stake. And a lot of big companies um, have concerns about proof of work because of its energy footprint. Now, there's a lot we could talk about, but the point is they no longer have to worry about that yeah. because of proof of stake. The next big transformation has been that NFTs in general have really lowered the barriers for big companies to experiment in Web3. Doesn't necessarily mean transforming their whole business, but we've seen countless companies from LVMH to Pepsi to um, you know, Starbucks to Nike and other big organizations uh, embracing this and trying it out. And you know, um, experimentation is a precondition to implementation. So you got to try something first before you go deep. Yeah. And then the final thing is that you know, the context of the market is that eyeballs are kind of off of, of crypto for the moment because um, the market has been, um, you know, in, the bit of, in a bit of a do the doldrums, and that actually creates the cover for companies to actually do more stuff. Yeah. When you're in the limelight, in the glare of the public eye, it's hard to experiment and try something new. But actually what we've seen for the past year is tons and tons of really interesting work. So I think we come out of this cycle, maybe the, Bla maybe the BlackRock ETF filing is the catalyst, but I think we come out of this cycle with um, a whole new set of uh, enterprise capabilities built on public blockchains. I think it's also important to talk a little bit about the startup side of things. Uh, yeah, not of necessarily blockchain startups, but you made an interesting point where you said uh, the best part, the best time, sorry, to start a business in blockchain was 10 years ago, <laughs> and the second best time is right now. So for those companies, those uh, entrepreneurs looking at us right now, wondering, you know, where do I get started with blockchain? I know nothing about it. It's all very fuzzy. What would you say to them? Um, I would say get started by getting educated. 
um, and get started by personal use. You know, personal use is a precondition for understanding. You know, um, what does it mean to know about blockchain? It means knowing what a crypto asset is, how to store it, what's a wallet, how does that work, what's a public key, you know, how do I um, keep my private key safe? Like all this kind of information, I think is important understanding it if you if you want to get serious. By the way, I think most like business applications of blockchain won't require people to have that much knowledge of the underlying technology, just as today we don't really know how you know HTML works or XML or anything else, frankly, we just like yeah. that it works. Yeah. But at this early stage, especially as a founder, yeah. like get familiar and then get educated. And the best way to do that, of course, is to pre-order my new book, <laughs> Web3. I was going Come to on. ask. So you've co-written with your dad uh, the uh, book Block Blockchain Revolution, That's right. sold in how many countries? Uh, well, it's been translated into 19 languages. 19 languages yeah. sold all around the world, I'm sure. Kind of the definitive book on blockchain. So what should we expect from your new publication? Well, Blockchain Revolution was the first book to explain to a mainstream audience uh, what blockchains were, how the technology worked, why they should care. And my hope is that Web3 is the first book that explains to a much bigger audience um, why Web3 is going to be foundational to the next era of business and culture. Yeah. And I think today the, the market for this book is much larger than the market for blockchain revolution because mm. the um, opportunity set, the technology is much larger, more advanced than it was before. And so, yeah, my hope is that the book helps to reset the conversation about Web3, um, helps to wipe some mud off the windshield, um, clear up some common misconceptions, and uh, you know, shine some new light on the, an important subject. So let me put you on the spot. You wrote the book about blockchain, you're writing the book or publishing the book about, NFT, uh, about uh, uh, Web3. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between blockchain and Web3 for those who maybe don't understand the the subtle nuance, I suppose. Yeah, well, sure. Well, blockchain's a technology. Web3 um, is a new industry or a new, new set of capabilities. Um, so blockchains are like one of the building blocks of Web3. But there are several other building blocks that are really important. I mean, we could talk about what they are, but there are tokens, there are smart contracts, you know, zero knowledge proofs, de decentralized autonomous organizations. All of these new capabilities taken together become the foundation for a new internet. Um, so blockchains are a necessary but not sufficient component in order for us to get there. Great, nice yeah. and short. And finally, your experience at Collision and how important is it, I know it's a bit of a controversial topic right now, uh, to have a conference like block like a Collision in Canada? Well, look, I think it's great to shine a light on this country and on this city. Um, Toronto is one of the most dynamic places in the world. Um, we're, we are open to the world. We take in many immigrants every year. We've got a, a deep and rich tradition of entrepreneurship and innovation and a really thriving tech community. And um, that's true for Web3 and, and blockchain as well. It's not quite as flashy as you see in other parts of the world. And I think that you know our government and other stakeholders like banks probably could be doing more. But the entrepreneurs in this town are building really cool stuff and the people should pay attention. So if Collision does anything to shine light on that, then that makes me a happy man. Awesome. Thanks All right. a lot, Alex. Great Thank to you, see you very again. much. Yeah, Take my care. pleasure. Over and out.